In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we gather, as always, we first call to mind our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, who came to gather the nation into the peace of God's kingdom, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, gather your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and grid him with your sash and give over him your authority. He shall be a father to inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Ju Judah. I will place the key of the house of David in Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut, and when he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be placed of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are these judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of Lord who has been his counselor or has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid for him through him and for him are things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. So I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly orders the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel today finds us at an important turning point in Matthew's gospel. And it's really an important turning point for everybody who is going to follow Jesus or whether they're going to follow Jesus. 
that important question, who do you say that I am? Not simply, who do other people say that I am, which he did ask that initially, but I think he asked it really as a build-up, as a lead-up, to see how his apostles, if they had understood anything different than what the rest of the crowds who were beginning to follow after Jesus were saying about him. And so also very present, very prevalent in our reading today is, of course, that understanding that we as Catholics have of, you know, Peter as the first pope. Peter as giving that authority of the keys that he receives, the power to bind and loose. And we have it paralleled and kind of introduced for us by the reading from the prophet Isaiah in the first reading. Because remember, when Jesus comes, he comes to fulfill all that happened throughout the people of Israel, the chosen people. And so there's precedent for what Jesus does today in the gospel. Because Israel had a king, but then they also had what we can call master of the household, a chief steward, or what in modern government sometimes is like the prime minister. Some governments have a president, but then under the president is the prime minister. And so We have Jesus always, of course, as the king, as the one who remains head of the church. But then he appoints someone to be what we call the vicar of Christ on earth. And that word vicar means somebody who shares in the authority of someone else. That's why I'm called a parochial vicar, because I am not the pastor. Father Mike is the pastor. But I get to share in some of his authority in the life of the parish. And so we recognize that this is a passage that speaks to that, but it's not the only passage where Peter is shown to be prominent, is shown that while he's also one of the twelve, he's certainly one of the twelve apostles, and just as the Pope is a bishop, a bishop of Rome, with other bishops, he also stands out. He also has that special authority, which uh, gives him a, a different role as well, more authority than the other twelve have on their own but they share some of that authority with him when they act collectively. So if anybody wants to go more in depth with this understanding and understanding the the office of the Pope, especially through Peter, there's a a book that came out recently called Pope Peter. Uh, The author is Joe Heschmeyer, and he delves into it because sometimes Protestants will accuse us of saying, well, this is really the only passage that we kind of over-interpret this passage, and that means that's how we get the idea of, of having a Pope, but in fact, Many, many times in the Gospels, Peter is taken aside or has that special role, and so he's, he's really uh, referenced many more times than all the other apostles combined in terms of the interactions that Peter has with Jesus in very special ways. So it's not the only passage, but it certainly is a prominent one, the one that we hear in our Gospel today. But this passage is not only about, you know, the fact that, okay, we have a pope and we have uh, the look at church authority, but it's also about the fact that we are called to be people who answer that question, just as Peter and the other apostles had to ultimately answer that question of, who do you say that I am? And that we have to say who Jesus is in our own lives. That being Catholic, sometimes the mentality was, well, as long as I receive the sacraments, then that's all that there is to being a Catholic, right? And it's essential, it's important to receive the sacraments, but we also have to answer that question who Jesus is by our life of faith, by that relationship with Jesus Christ. The Pope can't do that for for us, the bishop can't do that for us, our priests can't do that for us. We all have to answer that question individually. Who do you say that I am? And to have that relationship with Christ in our daily lives. You know, it's a reference I make over and over again. You'll probably be tired of hearing it, but I still think it's a good one, is that, you know, if we had a relationship with our spouse where we said, well, I see my spouse for one hour a week, as some do with their life with the church or their life with Jesus, is that they spend one hour a week with Jesus in the church, then we'd say, we'd probably say that that marriage probably had some problems if it was just one hour a week that that couple was spending together. And so it is in terms of our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with the church, it has to be broader than that. Now again, it has to be both a personal relationship but also a communal relationship. So it's personal to each one of us, but it's also lived in the life of the church, that Jesus did establish a church. 
He didn't just come to have individual believers follow him, but no, we are, are part of a church. And that's a good thing. It's also a challenging thing. We see it with Peter himself. Just as Peter a few weeks ago was walking on the water until he took his eyes off Jesus and then began to sink, so in next week's gospel, the passage that comes right after this in Matthew chapter 16, Peter uh, is going to hear the words from Jesus, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. Why? Because Peter denies that Jesus is going to have to suffer and die. And so Peter, and Jesus says the exact opposite to Peter in that passage of what he says to him today. Today he says, the Father, your Father in heaven has revealed this to you. Whereas next week he says, you are thinking as human beings do, not as God does. So again, we have to keep our eyes focused on Jesus at all times. And so there's also a play on words for the name Peter. You know, Jesus, Peter becomes Peter because of the passage today. That his name is Simon, he's named Peter because it means rock. And Jesus says, you're going to be the rock in which I'll establish my church. But that word rock also is that word for obstacle that we're going to hear next week. It's a play on the word where that rock can mean stumbling stone, a stone that can be tripped over. And that's the truth for whether it be the Pope, whether it be a bishop, whether it be a priest or a deacon or any one of us as followers of Jesus, that we are called to be those who are rocks of faith, witnesses of faith to other people, but sometimes we are stumbling stones of faith to other people because we don't give good example, because we don't live up to the call of the Christian life. And so that's the human element of the church that we always have to deal with. But we recognize that Jesus is calling us into that deeper relationship with him personally, but also that deeper relationship as the church. That we need to follow Jesus in our individual life of prayer, in our life of daily prayer, daily encounter with God's word, devotions like the rosary or saints that we might have devotion to, like Saint Monica, who we celebrate today, who of course is the great saint who showed us that we are, uh, can pray for other people and it might take years for other people to come back to, to church or come back to a relationship with Christ, but that that can happen if we're faithful to, to praying for that and, and interceding for that and, and trying to help others with that, that sense of faith. And that's part of our journey as Christians is that, of course, we have to share that faith with others. That to being a part of the church is not only being on this campus for mass or for other activities of which there's many going on, as we'll hear later in the announcements or see in the bulletin, there's much happening in the next couple months we can get engaged with, but it's also about the way that we live our lives daily in inviting people to prayer, inviting people into that relationship with Christ, and, and showing by our example as well how our life of faith affects everything that we do, not just on that Sunday for an hour, but every aspect of our lives is infused, is influenced with the life of Christ and the life of the church that he gives us. So this is our question today for all of us. Who do you say that I am that Jesus wants to ask for each of us? But it's also the question of who do we say the church is? What is the role of the church in my life? That's the other question we also should be asking. So let's take that to prayer as we reflect today and throughout the week. What is my relationship with Jesus like? What is my relationship with the church like? And to know that the more that we engage with Jesus and the church, while there will be challenges, there will be struggles, it won't always be easy, we will grow in the depth of our faith and the depth of our relationship with Christ and the purpose and meaning that we'll find as being disciples and followers of Jesus. Now, like Peter, let's confess our faith together as we confess our creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, gathering together our prayers and our petitions, we entrust all things to our merciful God. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless his papacy and grant him strength to shepherd his flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world, may God enkindle in their hearts a deep love for Christ, his Son, and grant them a life of freedom to worship him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for women facing challenging pregnancies, may God look graciously upon them and grant them strength, hope, and a community of support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all us gathered here, may the love of Jesus be at our, the heart of all we say and do in service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students, parents, teachers, and school staff, may they receive many blessings and much peace during this new academic year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all those affected by the explosion in Rustic Ridge and the wildfires in Hawaii and Canada, may the Lord grant them strength and adversity and compassion in their loss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully departed, especially Edna May Kalkstein, Frank Dvorak, Florence Robinson, Mary Callas, Arma Lashley, Irene Cheneau, and Evelyn Vogel, <clears throat> may the Lord in his mercy shine his eternal light upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Betty Bozovic, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask that we conclude our prayers to the intercession of St. Monica today. O oh God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, Augustine, gird us through the intercession of them both, that we may bitterly reject our sins and find the grace of your pardon. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second collection today is for the Catholic Communications and the Catholic University of America.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good also, Lord O God, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of your Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. But a people formed as one unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Monica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. And now let us offer another sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As work here continues, and we hope they're going to actually start the roof tomorrow, daily message will continue to be held at St. Susanna's until further notice, and the same with Thursday Adoration and Confession. This year's parish picnic is Sunday, September the 7th, uh, t- 10th, rather. Last day of registration is today. Frankly, you don't really have to register, but it sure helps us to plan appropriately. There's a representative in the back from the picnic community that, to help you register. So says just stop by and fill out the form. Time for the patriotic rosary listed in the bulletin has been changed due to the ongoing roof work. It will be held on Monroeville at 6 p.m. on Monday, September the 11th. RCA classes will begin soon. If you know anyone who might be interested in information about the Catholic Church, please contact me. Anointing the Sick will follow this Mass. Uh, and there's a baptism following the Mass for little Wesley, right? Working without notes here. So, um, so we welcome Wesley. The baptism will take place after the, after the anointing. Anointing, please go to this side of the church. And the Catholic Men's Fellowship Men's Conference is Saturday, September the 23rd. I think there's information in the bulletin. I don't know. In the back? Huh? Information is everywhere. Information is everywhere. In the back. In the back. The Lord be with you. you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now, proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.